the New York football giants. And Dave Gettleman has found a new trick. I don't know if you guys saw this. But he, he traded back twice in this draft. He's never done it before. He, he figured out, holy crap, people give me more picks for this one pick when I can trade back and get the same dude I wanted? Uh, kind of yep. interesting. Obviously, the Giants uh, started to look a little bit better last year after Joe Judge you know, took control of the team and whatnot. Uh, this is a team with a very college mindset. Uh, they got a lot of mm-hmm. dudes, and they want to push them and – you know, we're all going to fight together and we're, you know, da 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 da. Now, I don't know if that's necessarily going to work all the time, uh, but it seemed to work at some point, you know, middle of the year where they started playing pretty hard for him. And, you know, I was a fan of it. I, I kind of like uh, seeing that that whole situation and yeah. the way that it went. They better play. If they don't play hard, he's going to make their grandparents do push ups on the sidelines. That dude's a, <laughs> I don't know. I hate the way he approaches the game. It's so, like, you know, oh, it's dude. different. It's Some very Joe college. Judge. It's very college. Yeah. So yeah, it's it it's different, and I don't know how long guys are going to want to play for him, or or how he can mm-hmm. be successful long term. But but last year, you know, it seemed to work for a little bit. Obviously, Giants fans were mad about the uh, the Eagles, you know, uh, last game deciding to take Jalen Hurts mm-hmm. out of the game. Everybody thought they threw mm-hmm. it, you know, blah blah blah. You know, bottom line, Chris and I have talked about this: uh, win more games, win more games, yeah. then you don't have to worry about it. So uh, don't draft Daniel Jones. Okay, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I this, mean, I mean, hey, hang on, not just not, hang, on. De- hang on. Dave Gettleman was the guy that I was talking about that maybe is pretty good at drafting, but doesn't know what stuff is priced like. Yeah, like, exactly. Maybe Daniel Jones is not the worst guy you could have taken, but he was absolutely the worst guy you could take it at four. At exactly. Four. Yeah. Exactly. Hey, you, you know, uh, you know who they brought in to be his backup this year? No. Uh, Anybody want to take a stab at it? So it's not Colt McCoy anymore, nope. right? Nope. Sure not. Uh, I got no clue. No takers? No clue. I was going to yeah. look it up, but that's just cheating. I can't do that. Chase Daniel? Mike, no. Mike Glennon. <laughs> oh, Mike Glennon Mike is Glennon. the backup. Oh, Mike Glennon, the alien. Yep. He's still so, got a job. There we go. This will there be Daniel Jones. If you, break if you look at Mike Glennon and you don't believe aliens are real, we, can't have a, <laughs> we cannot have a rational conversation about anything yep. else ever. <laughs> What about Sam Cassell? The actual definition of an alien. It was I'm, Sam I'm Cassell. telling you this. I believe Mike Glennon's an alien. <laughs> the human body doesn't grow a neck like that or a head like that. Tyron Lou, Sam Cassell. Tell me there's no aliens. Yeah, exactly. Tyron Lou just, just doesn't know how to wear a suit. He looks all. like that guy. Remember Men in Black when they blew his head off and then it grows back and yes. it's a little small and he's like, ow, oh, man, that hurt. That's Tyron Lou. <laughs> Ty, I, I fully believe Tyron Lue is a normal built person. He just doesn't know how to wear a suit. It's like he's never met a tailor in his life. And so, so he just buys like the biggest suit he can find. And it looks like shit on him. But if he was wearing like jeans and a t-shirt, he'd look like a normal human being. Yes. Super funny. Yes. All right. So super funny. went six and 10 last year. They needed edge rushing help. They need a center guard linebacker. So basically what team is this? Who line the hell help. Are we talking? We're, we're talking about the Giants. Giants. Okay. Giants. We're, we're still All on right. the Giants. Get <laughs> I you know, uh, yeah, so yeah. so they trade back in the first round, and they end up with the Bears pick at number twenty, and they draft. You know, they they needed. I, I guess they needed wide receiver. I, I guess. Well, they just mm. paid for the most expensive they got Kenny free agent wide receiver on the on the market. Yeah, yeah, and they have Darius Slayton, and, and they, they have Sterling Shepard, and they brought so in I wasn't John Ross. Sure about this. Yeah, they brought I in John Ross. It. Um, and they they got Dante Pettis as well. They they signed him in the off season. Um, <laughs> he sucks. No, you know, no. Eh, whatever. I mean, he's there. He, uh, he, I'm a 49er fan. Dante Pettis can go jump off a bridge into the water and hopefully survive and hopefully knows how to swim. But go swim to an island and never play football again. He's useless. Absolutely <laughs> useless. So they draft wide receiver Kadarius Tony, who Chris and I, uh, you know, we're fans of. I mean, he can absolutely move. He can. Uh, He's insanely athletic, super quick guy. Uh, don't know that he was worth the pick at 20, but, mm-hmm. you know, we'll see. Like, he he developed a lot in 2020. I mean, he, I think he's still got a long way to go as far as his development, but, I mean, you got a guy. Uh, second round, you got edge rusher Aziz Ojalari out of Georgia. I like that pick quite a bit. Third round, Aaron Robinson, cornerback out of UCF. Fourth round, edge rusher Ellerson Smith out of Northern Iowa. It's another guy. It, those, those kids at Northern Iowa, man, something else. If you're not watching FCS football, there's some of these teams that you just got to pay attention to. Uh, well, you got something drag going on. Drag racing going on. <laughs> yeah, there's some drag race. My house is right next to a school, and you wouldn't believe how the people drive on this street. It's absolutely crap. Oh. That happened right next to a school? 
<laughs> yeah, my, there's a school, oh, and the, that's what these people do. You don't know that's how many nuts. fights I've gotten to in the front of my house screaming at these assholes not to speed up and down this road. It's ridiculous. I can believe it. I can believe this it. Is a, this is a drinking on the front porch situation where you throw empty beer bottles at them. I do yep. a lot of it. I do a lot of it. <laughs> this is definitely and one guy, one, on the front uh, sometimes they'll slam on their brakes when they yell and get all mouthy. And one guy, I started okay. walking up in my flip-flops, and his girlfriend goes, Honey, drive away. This guy's going to beat you up like you got beat up last week. <laughs> I like I'm like, yeah, you were going to get beat up. Running yeah, back, I mean, hold on, sixth how, round. Let me get back to <laughs> circle sorry, this thing sorry, back sorry, around. Yes. Yeah, digress, we can, we can sit and talk all day long. We, we need to start having you on regular shows so that we can just bullshit the whole time. I'd be all about exactly. that. Uh, sixth round, we got running back Gary Brightwell out of Arizona. Eh, take a flyer, I guess. Uh, mm. Sixth round, Radarius Williams out of Oklahoma State. He's a cornerback. So you got a couple of flyers late. Uh, other than that, I think they did okay. Like, I, you know, yeah. not as many picks as I would have been a fan of. Um you know, it's not my favorite draft by any stretch of the imagination. I think I, I think the I players they got Arizona got a player drafted. I mean, it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> the team was awful. Yeah, but they got the team talent. Was awful. They got talent. They just yeah. weren't coached well at all. I don't all. know that they have talent. They don't I have mean, a ton. We're going to disagree with the word talent. I don't think you're using that right. <laughs> all right. So, so I will say, I'll say about this draft. I'll keep it pretty short. So it's meh. I don't yeah. think they really filled many of the needs they really have here. You didn't no. need like look. Daniel Jones doesn't suck because the wide receivers were bad. They had plenty of wide receivers and tight ends and everything you could need. He's just not a good decision maker, and he's not very well coached by Joe Judge. Plain and simple, end of story. And, you know, you bring in Jason Garrett to be your offensive coordinator. What do you think you're going to see development? No, you're not. Freddie I always Kitchens say, as an offensive uh, analyst. and uh, Yeah, Freddie coach. Kitchens. Yeah. I mean, come on. Jason Garrett looks like the guy who uses a whole roll of toilet paper to cover the toilet seat in a public bathroom. He looks like a germaphobe. <laughs> but uh, I, I, he really does. But uh, I, I thought it was meh. I mean, the best part about the draft is that he traded down and got more assets for next year, et cetera. And I think that's the best thing that he did and sort of got rid of that stigma that he'll never trade down and never do the right thing. Well, could Tony be a super explosive player and just absolutely. I, but I don't think this is going to improve their win total next year. I don't think this makes them exponentially better in the future. It's just sort of meh for me. Hey, why, why do you think he didn't go after any offensive line help in this draft? Like they didn't sign uh, anybody really in the off season. Um, uh, you know, they, they brought in Zach Fulton, who's a guard out of Houston, but, like, I... I, I, I don't get it. Did I, I, did I, I miss something? I should have been all offensive linemen as far as I'm concerned. You, I mean, look what you had happen last year. Your star running back, the main piece of your offense, injured for most of the year. Daniel Jones, always running for his life, ended up being your lead rusher. Oh, Wayne Gallman was okay. He's now with the 49ers. But, yeah, I mean... Did they have guys back? hurt last year? Like is, is that? Yeah, I mean the the Giants were a mess, but defensive back wasn't their problem. If you remember, that defense actually got a lot yeah, better. Yeah, and it defense, was hard to throw. Yeah. It was hard to throw on that secondary. So I'm not. And the biggest issue for me sure. was was the offensive line, and I just I was kind of you know concerned that they didn't mm -hmm. do anything to short up. If you listen, hang on. If you're going to spend the number four overall pick one year on 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 uh, Daniel, Daniel Jones. Jones, and then the number two overall pick on a running back, I don't care how good Saquon Barkley is, he could be the second coming of Jim Brown. It doesn't matter. You do not yeah. spend the number two overall pick on a running back. David Gettleman is a moron. If you're the mm -hmm. organization, you're very happy that he got you new assets for next year so you can fire his ass and hire somebody who knows how to build a team. Yeah, I tend to agree. agree. Chris, you, you got anything else about uh, about the Giants here? Yeah, I don't like this draft. I don't like this. I don't like what they did at all. It, it, it's not that Tony's not good. I think Tony's probably good. I think there's a lot of well, wide receivers I like that went behind him a lot, but not a little better than him, a lot better than him. Um, and the the other part of it is is I don't – I don't know what he's trying to do. You, you talk about plan. I don't know what the plan is here outside of let's build more assets for next year and the year after because we're not really sure what our team is supposed to look like, but that's because you cocked up the two drafts in previous years. So th this is the reason your team doesn't have any like real cohesion. You just spent the most free agent money that anybody in the league spent on a wide receiver. Then you're going to spend your most valuable draft pick on that same position. What are we like? That doesn't make any sense. But none. And what's wrong with Slayton and Shepard? They're both really good young players. They're, they're both fine. They're both fine. I mean, if yeah. you think that having the best wide receiver, let's say he, let's say this draft pick makes them have the best wide receiving core in the league. Do you think that team that makes that team that much better? No, Daniel because Jones is I your don't, quarterback because you have yep. too many other holes. Yeah, yep. I, I tend to exactly. agree. I would have liked more bites at the apple. 
this, this year. This is a really good offensive line draft. There's no reason for them to have not taken an O lineman. This mm-hmm. is not. Yeah, I didn't. I, didn't yeah, agree. I really wish they would have taken one at at fourteen or back back where they were instead of selling to Chicago. So mm-hmm. then Fields falls to the Patriots. Yeah. Ah, there you go. <laughs> I see the real reasoning behind behind what mm-hmm. you wanted. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.